What's going on guys? Vic BP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going over Kev's Bar Top. Boom shakalaka! Alright guys, so just going quickly over Kev's Arcade. This video is going to consist of an overview of the bar top. Uh, I'm going to be doing this for all the builds. going to be going over exact details as uh, basically a lot of people do want information on bar tops uh, so we're going to start with the details and everything what it does and then we're going to go into kind of a tutorial for kev uh, as far as how to work it and how to play with it and all that in a later episode we'll be going into like an in-depth very in-depth kind of x games mode video as far as tutorials on how to change like aspect ratio and changing you know arcade sticks to the playstation controllers so in this one right here, we have a fully custom with the artwork and everything. This is a 22 inch bar top. Again, the screen is 22 inches. This does have custom artwork pre-applied. So side art, marquee, control panel, everything on this is customizable. So I could put anything you want. Uh, Kev wanted Kev's arcade on the top. He does like my retro kind of collaboration of all the old school games to it. So it's all there. Um, LED buttons on this one, whatever button colors you want, you let me know. He went with red, white, red, green, white, green, white bat tops, uh, and we did Sanwa joysticks on this. Uh, I'm going to be doing Sanwa sticks all the time now. Uh, for 10 extra bucks, you do get a great joystick instead of the zippies. As far as system on this, we are running 15,000 games. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 player. So we have two arcade sticks and I have two PS3 controllers, which I'll break out real quick. This does have stereo sound on it. So there is left, right, and there's actually a subwoofer down below. On the top here, we do have our rocker switch. With the headphone jack, it's right on the top, conveniently placed. You could turn on the audio, turn it off. If you're gonna do some night gaming, you could put the headphones in. It's easier to be up there. Also up top here, right behind it, you can't see it, but there is the LED sensor. Uh, there is an LED strip all around. It's wired to the buttons and everything. So if you wanted to, let's say, change the colors, you wanna set the thing to fade, you could do that. Uh, arcade button lights, um, they're basically wired to one of the three colors basically is RGB. These, I think I have these set to red. So anytime I have red, you could see the buttons turn on. If I go to green, the buttons are off. And if I go to blue, the button is off. So anytime red is basically hit to the LED strip, it will show the buttons. It's a really cool effect for the fade. So it kind of fades in and out, the colors go in and out. So it's really cool. These don't change colors. These will always be red, white, red. It's just more about the fade in, fade out. As you can see there, it fades in and fades out. So again, this is a complete plug and play kit. All you literally gotta do is plug it in. Everything is built into it. It's nice and neat. I'll actually turn the, the bar top around. I'll show you the back of it so you can see it. Control panel, you could lift up. There is some access and such to go into it. You should never go into this though. Uh, there is wiring involved. So this is already wired and configed. I would never open that. The only thing that will be here are the two USB dongles. These will actually sit outside, kind of like that. These will be able to charge your PlayStation controllers. Um, so as you can see, you could literally put it in and pull it out, put it in. Uh, you could either have them there or I could put them in the back. It's really just a USB charger for the PlayStation controllers. So right now it does boot up into a track mode. Um, so if you don't touch the cabinet for 45 seconds, it goes into this nice kind of a track mode displaying all the games and systems within it. If you want to just wake it up, you hit a button or a joystick and you could basically go through it. So this again is running a track mode. This is a very um, graphic intense kind of front end. Uh, so you will kind of experience a little bit of a delay. It's only on a track mode, because as you can see, there's a lot of videos, files going on. There's a lot of pictures going on and stuff. So it only happens here. And we'll go in depth on a tutorial as far as how to navigate and all that. But again, this is playing 15,000 games, a Raspberry Pi, Arcade sticks are always set to players one and two, and we have two wireless PS3 controllers for players three and four. So this is what the rear of the cabinet looks like. We have our speaker module here. Again, the speaker setup in this is a Z313. Um, if you did ever want to open it, it is on a hinge, so you could kind of do it. It will fully open. I just have the desk in the way. And basically, this is the rear of the cabinet, so you could see 
Our speakers are here. Again, everything nicely neat, wired up, heat shrink tubing and all that, trying to keep it nice as possible. You can see the LEDs, how it lights up the marquee. Um, down here is the subwoofer. That right there is the entire subwoofer for the system. So again, it's stereo sound, left, right, and the sub. We do have our power strip right here. So there's four plugs plugged in. You got the monitor, you got the Pi, you got the sound system, and you got the LED. So you do need at least a four strip um, power outlet. I already have that. It's already set nice and neat inside. It won't move and such. Right here is the system. This is the Raspberry Pi. On the left side here, there is an SD card. This is running 128 gigs SD card. Uh, and honestly, that is the cleanest you'll ever get it. We try to, you know, I try to staple all the wires, make sure nothing gets crimped or crushed. And there you have it. Again, we do have our two wireless PS3 controllers. Also, you know, with the Zinmo, this is running a Zinmo encoder. Uh, they always give you a couple extra wires as we only have 20 buttons here. And I think you could do a 32 button layout on the Zinmo. So for example, PC builds, uh, I do add, you know, two pinball buttons on the side. Uh, we do also add the power for the PC up top and all that. This is night mode. Basically, if you turn off all the lights, this is what your cabinet will look like. Again, underglow, two sets. So it goes underneath your bottom plate here. It goes underneath the control panel and the marquee. Luckily, with the vent fans in the back, not the fans, but the vent openings, you do get some LED glow in the back. So this is what it looks like at night. Again, LED strip set to fade. Uh, it's your standard LED strip. So you could have it, you know, do like disco mode and jump and all that but i usually like to set it to fade or white or red or whatever color you like just remember if i have it on green as you can see the led buttons are off the buttons work in general it's just the led light itself is off again as it's programmed to red again the way i'm talking this is all kind of nerdy stuff so you as a customer doesn't really need to know it if you are on the nerdy side of it and really like to know details of it those are really the basic details on it now this right here is going to be the tutorial part for Kev. I'm going to show you the basics, turning it on, turning it off, and then we're going to go in depth as far as changing controller options and all that. So for right now, I'm going to actually turn off the arcade and I'd rather start fresh, meaning we're going to start basically as if you just got this in your house. Always a tough thing to do one handed, but basically this is the cabinet here. It is unplugged. So you're going to take the power cord that's coming out of it and basically plug it into your outlet. There we go plugged in once you plug it in it will start booting up it takes about one to two minutes maybe even three minutes to just kind of boot up you will always get a little bit of a loading screen these have random stuff so it's a lot of random pictures i think i have like 100 pictures on it just for fun and all that so again this right now is still booting up i encourage you not to touch anything while it is booting let it do its thing uh, i won't cut on this as it's going oh there you go boom that's it so again, quick one to two minutes. Once you do see like the arcade here or whatever screen is on that's moving, your computer, your system is now booted up. So now for navigation, you can either use player one or player two. I usually do player one. Basically you can go up and down to go through it. This is your main system. This is like the main menu. So it does break it down by category. So as you can see, you have arcade, consoles, we got handhelds, collections, shmups. This does have Kodi. I haven't touched this in years. Uh, but if you do kind of connect it to the internet, you could probably use it like that. So these are like your main menu. So, you know, if you wanted to play Super Nintendo, that's considered a console. So you'll go into the console wheel. You want to play some arcade action, you'll go into the arcade wheel. So again, just to show you to understand that, yes, I understand there is a little bit of lag on the main menu. So as you can see, if I go down, you do kind of see the lag. Um, again, it's only for this because as you can see, there's so much stuff going on in the screen. So let's load up some Street Fighter. I always like my Street Fighter. So Street Fighter is an arcade game. So you always go into arcade. So you kind of go up wherever you are. You go to arcade, you press button one. Button one is enter, button two is back. So if you want to go back, you press button two and you could go back. We want to go to Street Fighter, so button one. This right now is a sub menu. So this kind of breaks down arcades into different categories like if you know your company names like we have data east we have neo geo we have konami snk capcom my most common one i usually go to is mame this usually has all the games under it so once you're on their mame you press enter 
and now you're gonna be inside the actual game wheel list. When you're inside the game wheel, I do have this set amazingly. I love how I have this set. You have 2,200 games. On the bottom right, you will see the game number. So we wanna play Street Fighter. We're right now under M. You can see the, the game name here. We're under M. So me just holding the joystick down, going to S, is gonna be a nightmare. So button three is previous letter and button six is next letter. So um, basically we're gonna go to Street Fighter. So we're under M, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. So we have to go down, so next letter. So if I press button six, as you can see, N, O, P, Q, R, S. So now we're under S, like the, the beginning of S. We could do like real quick Super Street Fighter, that's S, U. So to do a shortcut, you actually go down to the next letter, you go to T, and then you actually go up. You'll learn it. I mean, again, there is a lot of games. Going to 2,200 games is a lot. Imagine just holding down the joystick, so that's annoying. We found Super Street Fighter. Awesome. We're ready to play. Button one is enter. Go through this little loading screen. You gotta let it go. I suggest you don't touch anything. I raised the volume. And this is real arcade stuff. So when you actually plugged in the actual arcade, like if you had a real cabinet, it would go through this. It's a little bit of, you know, it's kind of like a boot menu, boot screen. So right now it's got your warning. So you can kind of push the button and it'll skip it. Now we're into the arcade. Arcades do need coins. So we have coin buttons here. So coin one, player two coin, and then you can press start. So player one and player two. I'm going to lower the volume. And basically there you have it. You literally play your arcade games and you enjoy it. I do urge you if you ever have a situation where you think a button's not working, always load up Street Fighter as Street Fighter uses all six buttons. And we're playing it. Right now this is set to 16 by nine stretch, so it's a full screen game. And like I said, if you ever wanna test your buttons, just load up some Street Fighter and that is the best way to make sure all of your buttons work correctly. Do left, right, up and down, and so on. Left, right, up and down. I have some cool features on most of the systems that are here. You do have load and save states. Um, so for example, if you were playing and you wanted to go eat, uh, you could basically save this exact part that you're in, which basically brings us down to our button buttons here, our bottom buttons, I should say. So there's four buttons. Um, so there's four buttons. There's an exit, there's a save, there's a load, and there's a shift. These are all labeled. Um, let me turn off the LED so you could see it. There you go. LEDs are pretty bright, but you can kind of see it. It's even got the logos here. So again, exit, save, load, shift. So the way this works is that basically if you're going to exit a game, I'll show you how to exit, but right now we're talking about save and load. So this is a key button here, the shift button. You must hold this button down to use these three buttons. So right now, if we're going to save a screenshot, all you do is hold shift and then you press save. When you do press save, you'll see a little bit of lettering there, wording that says save state. So I literally save this exact picture. So if I'm gonna beat you up and then let's say we wanna reload, you literally do shift load. And when you do that, it will load up the same exact picture or screenshot that it took in the area. So if you were to exit and you wanna come back, you know, you could exit, play another game and then come back to this game, you could literally load where you were. Pretty cool feature, save and load. Now we're gonna talk about exit. If you did wanna exit the system, very simple. Again, you have to hold down shift and then you press exit. So now you're back to the main menu. So again, if you do wanna exit, you have to hold down shift. I can't stress enough, you must hold this down. I had this set where you need that kind of safety because some people do accidentally just kind of push this button with their, stom with their stomach and you wanna make sure that you do have to hold shift and press exit. So now real quick, a very big thing is now shutting down the system. This is a must. You have to do this to avoid corrupting the SD card. Once you exited, you're back to your arcade wheel. Again, you can see the game that we were just playing. We're going to now shut the system off. So again, button two is your back. So we're going to go back. Basically, we're going to answer go back to the main menu. So we're in the sub menu. We're going to go back. We're in the main menu. We're going to press back one more time. And you're going to see this exit a track mode. You're going to go up and you're gonna press yes. So button one to press yes. Once you see this little pie logo, you can now unplug the system. You are safe to unplug it. And that's basics. I just unplugged it from the main power and that's it.
you could leave these systems on overnight again we're going to go into details about a track mode and all that but for right now if you did want to turn it off move it or you just want to turn it off to save power you turn it off now we're ready to play it again basically just like step one we're going to plug it in plug it in and again once you plug it in everything will boot up and turn on we turned off the leds so if i do turn on the leds leds should turn on the screen will turn on again there's your little loading screen and again give it the one to two minutes and it will boot up next thing i'll show you some four player action using the playstation controller so again let it do its thing we're going to load it up just keep in mind that these are always set to players one and two all the time so i could send you a list of uh, four player games we're going to go into arcade i always do the simpsons game it's really great it's very easy to go through so i'm in my sub wheel so again this is where you could pick like you know neo geo and all that uh simpsons was a konami game but again we're going to stick with the main wheel so button one to enter so the thing about the simpsons game is that it's literally called the simpsons so you do need to go to the s so right now we're under like s we're under the regular s so if you try to go up and go to si you're not going to find simpsons it's the simpsons so again we're going to use our letter navigator here i'm going to go to button six because we have to go to the so v is t so qrs t we're going to go to next so we're under t if i do it one more time it will bring us to the a so now we're under like the a the b the c and as you can see as i'm pressing the next button the next letter it keeps jumping to the letter so we're going to go to the simpsons and again we're going to use button six i'm going to try to keep my hand there the l the m the n o p q r and then s so we have the simpsons loaded up so normally what i do suggest you could do it any way you want but i do suggest before you press enter you do want to kind of turn on your playstation controller so your playstation controller has a ps button in the middle just hold it down and then leave it be it'll literally connect by itself we're going to have some four player action so we're going to do player four leave it be and in about maybe five seconds it will kind of load up so this right here is labeled as player three this one right here is labeled as player four now that you have the controllers booted up we can now enter into the game remember some games most games really with arcade is that the certain character is linked to that certain controller so for example player one is always marge you can't play marge with player three it, it doesn't work that way that's how the real arcade was back in the day so as far as playstation controllers this kind of configuration is the same exact way this arcade stick is set up so basically if you try to think of it we have one two three four five six the way the playstation controllers lined up is that it's one two l one is button three three four r one is button six so that's kind of like how the button layout is and as far as coin and select so select is my coin and start is start so again as we go down the list i'm going to put coin one for player one and as you can see it's marge coin two will load up homer coin three again this is controller three that loads up bart and then player four that loads up lisa we press start you got to press start on all the characters if you have four players going on and such to enjoy the four players and right now basically we have four player action you got four friends around you enjoying it that's the big thing i do like about the 22 inch screen the screen is big enough to enjoy with four people this is not the arcade one so as you can see we could use as far as the playstation control you could use the analog stick which is the left stick or the d-pad to kind of navigate around as you can see i am using bart we're getting beat up a little bit and again you do have your buttons here to attack you have to kind of figure out what button does what but that's arcade and again each joystick will work uh we are getting beaten up badly right now so <laughs> all the other players died we'll bring marge in and as you can see i could literally play with marge jump around let's bring a uh, homer back in and there we go we are literally playing so a game like this is utilizing buttons four and five so four is to punch and five is to jump same thing here four is to punch five is to jump once you kind of figure that out then you'll understand how the playstation controller is so for example x would be to punch and circle would be to jump so if i bring back bart let's say so you can see i'm skateboard hitting and again we could use our d-pad or analog stick to run around
Same thing here, we could save the state. If we're gonna go and eat, you literally shift save. And again, you will see save state loaded. And basically if we come back, we could literally reload back. It's quick, we could exit out. So same thing, shift exit. And then we're back to the home screen. Just to show you what I'm talking about, I could literally reload the game. I left the game, I could play a different game. I could reload this game. Let it go through again, it's boot phase. So again, arcade will go through its boots. We have the PlayStation controllers on. And now, if we wanted to go back to that exact moment of that game, you literally shift load. And we are literally back exactly where we were before. And again, four players and all that. Let's say we want to exit. Let's play some, I don't know, Mario Kart from the Super Nintendo. So we're in our game wheel, but we are in arcade. We have to go back. Basically, we said Super Nintendo, that's a console. So we're going to go back with button two. We're going to go back to the main wheel as we do need consoles. So we are here. We go down. We're going to go to consoles. Perfect. Button one is enter. And again, you do have a couple of consoles here. We are looking for a Super Nintendo as that did play Mario Kart. So button one is Super Nintendo. And again, same rules apply here. We have our game wheel. We have this, the, basically the name of it, and we can use our buttons to skip. So we're going to go to Super, which is S. So I'm holding down or pressing button six. And we're going to go basically, I'm going to go to T, LMNOP, QRS. I'm at T. I'm going to go up as I believe it's Super Mario Kart. Could be wrong. Let's see. Super. Yeah, so Super Mario Kart. And then you press button one. And we are in it again let it load and it's literally going to load up super mario on the super nintendo just like it did in the classic way so again these are buttons one and two so i could do two players if i want now remember some of the games like for super nintendo and the nes you would need to press start or select which is your coin button to go through the main menu so we right now could do this we're going to do two players and as you can see i could literally pick a character I could do the same thing here. Same thing, we could do save and load state so I could save this exact point that we are in. And when I do it, you will see a little saving thing on the bottom. And again, this screen is, is set to 16 by 9 stretch. And down here, you do have like your button layout. So this is using B and A. So Super Nintendo did use all the, all the buttons. So for example, button four, I am using the gas. And again, I am literally using the joystick to play this. I'm bored, I'm tired, I don't wanna play this anymore. Shift, exit, it will bring you back. Really honestly, the gist of it, again, you could let this go into a track mode. Right now we are in the Super Nintendo wheel. Um, I'll briefly describe how a track mode works. After 45 seconds, I could set it to earlier, but I think 45 seconds is a sweet number. After 45 seconds of nobody touching the system at all, it goes into a track mode. What a track mode does basically is that it goes into this nice kind of phase where it goes through all the games and such within this system specifically. So if I leave it alone, it's going to go through all the games inside of Super Nintendo. And again, it's set to 45 seconds, so I don't really want to cut. Let it kind of do its thing. There we go. And as you can see, it is kind of just showing off a couple of games. It's pretty cool. Like at night, if you go to dark mode, you could just literally leave it alone. You walk past it, and honestly, you do discover some new games with this. So it's really cool. Again, this is a track mode, so it's literally showing you the game title. It's giving you a little bit of the preview of it, and there's sound to it. So again, you could either mute it, you could turn off the sound, or leave it on. But basically, once the game video is done, it's going to go into a different game. Again, this is called a track mode. As you can see, we went to another game gives you the game title here. It's very awesome, it's very cool. But again, remember, this is showing games within Super Nintendo. If I do wanna, let's say, go into arcade, which I usually do, also if you do press button one, it will actually bring you to that game and you can play it. Let's go back, we're gonna go into arcade and we're gonna do a track mode on arcade. So I'm gonna go again into main arcade, press button one to enter and again, same thing, we're gonna let it go for 45 seconds. 45 seconds to me is a sweet number. You leave it alone for 45 seconds and it'll go into a track mode and it'll basically randomize and show 2,200 games. 
Now, keep in mind, there are some customers that do leave this on overnight. Um, I usually have one, uh, you know, left on overnight for hours. It's kind of a good idea to kind of maybe shut it down. Uh, you know, I wouldn't leave it on for the entire week. I've had somebody left it on for like a week. Um, it's fine to do that. I would probably suggest that you do shut it down maybe after, you know, 24 to 48 hours, just to let, you know, the Raspberry Pi kind of cool down and such. But again, if you were planning like a barbecue, you plug the system in and you let it go. Your family and friends could just walk up to it. They pass by it and such. So again, it's really cool. It's a good piece and it's really a piece of furniture. As you can see right now, we went into a track mode now. So again, we got a big video. We got the game it's displaying. And again, there's sound on it and such. I personally have discovered so many games that I would never even know was a game without a track mode on it. So it's really cool. Again, 2200 games for at least arcade style. Last note about the PlayStation controllers, after about five or 10 minutes, I never counted it, the, the controllers will turn off by themselves. So if you leave the controllers alone for about five minutes, they do turn off by themselves. And then again, like I was saying before, this right here, I'll have this either exposed for Kev or in the back. Basically, you could take this wire and then plug it in. Now again, you could use the charger here. Uh, if you do want, you could you know turn the PlayStation controller on first and then plug in the charger and let it charge. I do notice that if you don't turn on the controller, uh, it just vibrates. Uh, if you don't turn on the controller beforehand, I'll actually show you with the blue controller. Basically, I had that controller on before I charged it, but right now this controller is off. If I do plug it in, you're gonna see I'm gonna do it one-handed. I'm sorry. Basically now the, the joystick, the controller just rumbles as it's charging. Again, these are knockoff PlayStation controllers, so it's probably best to turn on the controller and then plug it in to avoid the rumbling. Again, it's literally vibrating. Uh, it's just got power to it. So if you do want, maybe give it power first. So turn on your PlayStation controller first. Let it connect if you want, and then give it a charge. And again, that's why you could either have, you'll let me know if you want the USBs exposed in the front or in the back. And as you can see now, it's not, it's not shaking. There's your PlayStation 3 controllers. And again, we could either have it in the front. It's got, I think a four foot cord on it or three feet. So um, you, I could have it in the back here. But again, some people do have their cabinet right against the wall, so that's not a really good spot to put it. I mean, it's up to you. You let me know, and also you could you could also open up the back door and kind of move the USB cord around on its own. One last feature I do have is that I do have the randomizer button now. So button five, while you're in, let's say, arcade, if you press button five, it will just pull up a random game. It'll cycle through the 2200 games and just pull up a random game. So if you're ever bored and you just wanna explore, you could literally press button two, uh, button five, I should say, and it'll do it. So again, button five. And again, it's just giving us random games. So if you did want to just kind of randomize and just play a random game, button five will do that. And this one right here, we're going to turn off our system. So again, we're going to wake up the system. Any button, any joystick you want, we again are in the sub menu. We're going to go back, which is button two. We're going to go back and then we're going to go up and press yes on exit a track mode. So again, you'll press yes on a track mode to shut the system down. Once you do see the little pie symbol, you are safe to unplug it. So figure once you press exit, give it maybe like, I don't know, 15 seconds, and then you could cut the power on it. Again, this system is ready to go plug and play. You should not have to configure anything. This thing is set and ready to go. VicVP, Gamecase Arcades, Kev's Arcade, buddy. We're gonna be delivering this to Westchester. Let me know when you're ready, buddy. This build, just like all the other builds, are amazing.